This is the Amp Hour Podcast. Released February 11th, 2018. Episode 379. An interview with John Saunders. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. And I'm John Saunders with Saunders Machine Works and NYC CNC. Hey, John. Welcome, John. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So, John, you are the guy who taught me how to use uh, parametric CAD. So, thank you for that right at, right at the outset here. Uh, you are more than welcome. Parametric CAD? Yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, 3D, 3D parametric, right? So where you're, well, John, why don't you explain what yeah, parametric CAD I'm, is? Yeah, I'm going to play the CAD dummy today. <laughs> that's that's right. Dave, Dave is the electronics and not mecha- mechanical Even guy. Even though I, I used to work for a CAD company, but right, that's right. like a- <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's funny because that term gets thrown out a lot, uh, mm. and I'm not sure... I'm not sure a lot of people know. I'm not sure I really know. Uh, the idea of parametric really refers back to this idea that you can link things together yeah. formulaically. So, like, for example, you could have a, a circuit board or a PCB formulaically related to the size of another component where it's all, you're not doing any destructive editing. But most hmm. people really just think of Fusion 360, which is what I tend to use these days, as just a solid modeling tool where you yeah. can build build stuff or make stuff to have machined or printed or molded or simulated, rendered, so forth. And yeah. it's not? No, it is. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> it is, but you can actually... It, funny, funny you should ask uh-huh. that, Dave. Um, you, can, you can, and I highly encourage that you do edit uh, in Fusion 360 in the normal mode, which is parametric mode there is a thing called direct modeling in fusion and if you're listening yeah. to this right now and you're wondering and you're concerned don't worry but <laughs> yeah direct modeling has some pretty cool features where you sort of say hey i don't want to know what i was doing i just want to s- think of it like sculpting clay yeah. that yep. would be an example of where you're more interested in the outcome and not the inputs right and yeah i think and i think that's good too because a lot of people uh, so like my whole intro to the whole thing in the first place was I got a 3D printer, right? As many people do, and you know, got it up and running mostly, as many people do. Uh, and then, you know, you go to Thingiverse, you download a thing, you get it printed, great, whatever, right? But right. the thing they never tell you about is like, shit, you got to go and model this thing. You got to go and if you want to make something custom, you have to learn how to make something custom. And that's where I, I, I was like, oh yeah, of course. And you know, I had used SketchUp for a long time. Uh, Sorry and- to hear that. Yeah, I know. Hey, yeah. uh, it was great. I, I designed I no. designed a, a 3D model that, that my company ended up using as a preliminary thing that ended up going back to the industrial designers. So it works awesome. as a prototyping, but it, right. it's not a real tool. And so then I started looking, and then Fusion came up, and then I found your stuff. So Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, you know, and, and I, I think the, the, the modeling piece is becoming more and more like a, a must-have skill. You know, even in the electronics world, right? You have to hmm. get a 3D model of your circuit board in there to make sure it'll fit in this case that you have maybe right you know? well and so much of us so much of the thing, thing that ties all of us together you know ironically the reason that uh you and i met chris and, and dave the reason i'm actually coming to australia in a few weeks is this overall idea of like making in the 21st century and we live in a great time whether it's the 3d printers whether for me things like arduino low-cost cnc machines you know low-cost cad cam uh it's pretty fun yeah it's you, great. You, you, oh, it's youtube brilliant. yeah YouTube. Yeah, Speaking of I, which, right. let's, let's, for people who don't know who you are, um, tell us what YouTube channel you run and how you got around to doing that. NYC CNC. Uh, and that is, fun fact, YouTube doesn't really let you change your name. I did yeah, live so in, your user is Sonix Comp. <laughs> oh, that's even worse, right? But even the NYC CNC, I... I it would be a Herculean effort to get it to change, and there would still be this relic and so forth. And anyway, what, I what did, would you change it to? Well, so when I left New York, NYC stands for New York City, which is where I did live uh, for about 10 <laughs> years. Um, and, and now you're so, stuck with the name. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, when Sorry, it's like you, d- d- no, but when you started EEV blog, I don't think you anticipated half a million subscribers no, and you're full time. Right. <laughs> Not at all. So here I am knowing, I didn't know what a Bridgeport was or an end mill, but right. I was outsourcing machined parts. I wanted to learn. I'm in New York city. I've got a day job and I had a digital camera. I had used my Mac in the old school iMovie and I enjoyed it. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to be 
one of those guys who hops on the internet forums because YouTube wasn't really a household name then. Uh, I'm going to be one of those guys who doesn't just take, 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 and then leave as soon as he's gotten everything he right. needed out of the forum. I'll try to pay it forward. And I figured, yeah, there's got to be 10 or 20 other people that are interested in CNC. And uh, I think I mentioned to you guys a minute ago before we hit record, but I uh, was really lucky. This is right when Arduino came out and I was a one of the earlier members uh, or participants at NYC Resistor, which was like yep. probably arguably like the first maker space. Is that my... That, that, uh, that, that's pretty uh, close, stateside. I think. Uh, yeah. that, so yeah, Noise Bridge and, and uh, Resistor were yep. the two starting ones in the States pretty uh, much, as far yeah, as I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to stake a claim so much as like <laughs> to, to, to look back. It's funny because it's such a ubiquitous household thing now. And it was really cool to get together with a group of people back then and take these classes on you know, the Ethernet shield of an Arduino or Blender or whatever. Uh, they had a, a laser. It was cool. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Anyways, started the YouTube thing. Totally just did it for fun. I loved it. At the time, there wasn't even monetization. No, and, no one was doing it full time. You didn't even oh, think yeah. it was possible. It was h- hilarious. Yeah. I remember the first time I broke $100 a month when it did, finally did turn into a monetization. And I was like, this is great. This great. will buy me like three <laughs> three drinks in New York City. Um, <laughs> So uh, anyways, fast forward, I, I was able to build my manufacturing company up into something uh, substantial enough and uh, for a whole bunch of awesome reasons was excited to have, I, I loved New York City, but I was also happy to move back to Ohio where I grew up. Ohio! Uh, with, <laughs> yep, with a wife and now two kids. So, wow, uh, nice. Um, so life is good. I run, we do videos now though, focus on making stuff largely with uh, CNC milling machines. Yeah, and you do training on site. I, I was talking to a friend. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to one of the training sessions." He's oh, going. Really? To, he's that's going hilarious. to Zanesville. He's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you guys do on site training too, which is like really that's a great idea. Uh, it's, uh, can I s- talk about that from a profit side of things? Because we have. Do you remember when we had uh, Robert um, uh, Fen- Fenerick on? Oh about yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Um, yeah. He he runs the uh, PCB design tutorial stuff, and that's his full time. Business is running, yes. uh, Federville is running Academy, uh, Federville yeah. Academy, running PCB actual classes, and he's pretty much the only one in the world, I think, doing that, or one of very few doing <clears> that. <throat> Do you? Uh, <clears throat> oh, well, okay, sorry. <clears throat> yes, yeah, maybe in person. How about that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Run actual classes, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, and and like well, goes uh, on site to companies to train people up and and right, things yep. like that. And um, it, do you think there's more like from a financial point of view do you think there's more there's a better future in that than this silly youtube thing so i that certainly wasn't the goal and and it isn't it's never been the goal of any of our sort of products or or endeavors that the training started because um we've had a long-term relationship with these cnc machines called tormox which to summarize are very affordable machines that you could put in your house and, and quite capable for the price <laughs> yeah, talk, and, talk, talk to your wife first uh, you know, get, right, get permission. before you bring this <laughs> much 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 easier to ask for forgiveness now it's yeah, yeah, difficult yeah, it's to, yeah. to explain why she's never going to be able to park in the garage again right, yeah, right. but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why I had to move my lab I mean, out you of the did garage. This, you know, you did, you did this in a New York City apartment, right? Is that the that's that the I story? I I actually convinced my wife to move outside the city to the suburbs just so that we could buy a Tormach. Oh, <laughs> oh, well done! Pro, Round pro of level, applause. pro level yes. here. Yeah, right. Our, yeah. Our, yes. our freight elevator wouldn't fit the Tormach <laughs> I, uh, at the time. And I had a tag though. I had actually two machine, three machines in my New York City apartment, but they were uh-huh. smaller, and I needed, uh, yeah, needed and, and emphasize N E E D. I needed right. A, right. a bigger it's, machine. This is for the business, dear. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so yeah, Tormach. So we we built this brand around those machines. We had people, uh, either companies or we had people who who you know were they they had very little financial limitations in life, and they basically said. John Saunders, I need you to fly out to Phoenix or, or Oklahoma or Dallas to help train me on this machine for three days to show me how to make parts. And I'm sitting here growing this business in Zanesville now. I've got work to do. I've got a family. I was like, mm. I don't want to fly. Yeah. I like to travel for fun or to tour factories, not to do one-on-one yeah, not, training. Not to go to Phoenix, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Phoenix people. <laughs> yeah. I did, that was Chris, not me, just so we're clear. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, that was Chris. Yes, Chris was uh, insulting all of Phoenix. Yes, please let the record show. Um, no, so I just thought, you know, Hey, uh, I'm going to start a training program and I put it up and I started advertising it and we've now done it for 
two years, and we host basically seven to nine days a month of classes. Wow. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Uh, most of them are sell out. Wow. Really? And wow. so what's, what's the range of price for this thing? Two, a two-day Fusion 360 class where you're just in front of a computer is mm-hmm. three hundred dollars, and that's that's, that's actually nothing a very for low a company. That's yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yep. That, that's right. that's a very it's all low travel price. cost, really. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. Um, to the three-day hands-on class where you're actually leaving the class having made multiple parts on a CNC machine where you are actually operating and running your code is eleven $1, seventy-five. Yeah. That's still and cheap. That's compared, so do that, they I mean, come to you? Yeah, Tormach. Well, Tormach Correct. does training too, right? right? Okay. I mean, so and they do training in the many thousands, right? That you you could also pay for. So it's it's yeah, got a reference yeah. point, right? Our cur- yeah. our um, I mean, I love Tormach. Our curriculum course, is no. much better, much better. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and our we've got it set up to where you're really you know the whole thing with the CNC machine is you're going to leave our class and you're going to go run your machine or a makerspaces machine. So you've got to yeah. have some really key fundamental things understood. Mm-hmm. Um, which is very different than just walking up to a machine mm. that somebody else has set up or programmed and hitting go. And mm-hmm. you can do yep. that in three days? We do. A, it's a for sure a, a full three days, but we do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is okay. there like a longer call, like a like super advanced guru course or something? After the three day, we have a two day advanced class and right. a lot of people do, those classes run back to back. So a lot oh, of people okay. end up stay, staying for stay seven for the days. Whole week. Yep. Right. No. Is it is oh, it wow. most is it mostly what you find that your market is mostly is it companies who pay for their employees to go or is it just individuals? It is probably it's it's everything. I mean, literally, right. uh, it's probably a third to half companies. But we've we've had everything from fifteen year olds to eighty nine year olds. Wow, you know, class. <laughs> sweet, yeah. which is great. Yeah, there's a life call. Just keep learning. Yeah, keep learning. Right, it's yep. super fun. Yeah. But it's like you said earlier about who else every there's not that many other places you can go and mm-hmm. actually operate a machine and the few places you can it's usually tied to say you having to buy a like a two hundred thousand right. dollar machine or buy ten thousand dollar software packages or some sales pitch ours is just hey you're here to learn i have nothing to sell you other than really good training yeah awesome. well it's interesting too because yeah. there's such a i mean so so i i've looked at this stuff with machining as well and it's like there, there's nothing but on site, right? You can't you, you can't be like, well, buy yourself a Tormach, and then you know we're going to remote the. You want to be there right. for safety. You want to be there for the hands on for the physical physicality of it, right? So that yeah. all makes a ton of sense. But right. like, but like there's even on the vocational side of things, right? There's there's a lot of need for this, and it seems like a underserved market. I know there are, there are many programs, so please don't write in and say, you know, hey, look at this program. I, I know there's a lot of programs out there, but it seems like in terms of how many machinists are needed in terms of the people that are retiring and and then and are needed in the near future, it seems like there's not as much out there than, than there should be, you know? Right, right. A- agreed. And considering that you can buy a machine for like from China for next to nothing these days, right? Dirt cheap. The, the Generally speaking... Uh, the equipment is less of a barrier than ever and the knowledge. I mean, mm. yes, it's coming to our class is a great Kickstarter, but the reality is you can watch our YouTube channel or others and you can learn this stuff. Mm-hmm. I have I have uh, proof on my channel of uh, messing up many times and yet I, I didn't die and I did end right. up and I'm actually machining things poorly, but I did it. But so. Chris, no, didn't, awesome. didn't you kind of fall out of favor with your cnc machine so to speak like it wasn't as useful as you thought it might be is that uh, yeah, through yeah no, lack that's, of that's, experience or i think well i'm sure john could speak to the to the learning curve but it was it, it was a learning curve thing for sure of like yeah building building something you know milling a pocket is a lot different than milling a interesting piece versus right. the expectations yeah. of like looking at a you know a thing on thingiverse and being like well i want to make that out of metal it's like oh that's stupid right that's mm-hmm. that's not the whole point in the first place so it's kind of just pairing all the stuff together, in my opinion. Maybe, John, you could speak to all that stuff as well. You no, know, it's a great question. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of similar jokes or quotes in the electronics world where it's like it's very difficult. It's easy to talk about something. It's very difficult to complete it and finish it and so mm-hmm. forth. But uh, a lot of times machining a part isn't hard. Uh, even the CAM, which is using the CAD software to program the tool pass, isn't necessarily all that hard. A lot of times it's really difficult to hold on to parts because a lot of times the part you want doesn't oh, yeah. perfectly and neatly fit into a vice that yep. lets you right. complete the part. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, being like keyed up and like if you have to move it, then is it still in the right place and does your machine right. know it is? Or you've yeah. got to do a second operation, which is flipping it over, which is how the heck do I hold it now and so forth. Yep. So two things. 
One, um, our videos are called the Wednesday widgets. We put them out every Wednesday. Next week's Wednesday widget, in fact, I don't know when your podcast will air, but the Wednesday widget around the middle of February uh, will be on a really, really, really cool trick, uh, which ironically I showed Quinn at MHub oh, uh, nice. as, as a way to hold on to some really difficult parts, which yeah. is a good universal uh, way to hold everything. And the second thing is we now do, sounds like what you have, Chris, and, and you, Dave, with your EV blog, but nyccnt.com has all this uh, tutorial content on fusion, on machining, on speeds and feeds, on setting up parts uh, for mm-hmm. the folks that do want to figure stuff out as a, as a really good resource. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and we should mention, that's, that's how John and I met. That's what uh, uh, John was talking about. Uh, he was at, at MHub, uh, where I work out of sometimes. So, yeah, that's how we met. Um, yeah, okay. So, and uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is uh, beginners, right? So, so who should get into machining, right? So, the reason I ask is because I got into it from a document, uh, and I can explain that document later, but like, who, who, who do you think should or does get into machining these days? Well, for sure, folks that want to go into the trades to actually work in the manufacturing sector, which is kind of the obvious use case. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's really helpful for folks that are in hardware entrepreneurship, whether it's, you know, you go to think back to if you were part of the Pebble team when you were on a Kickstarter project, you know, understanding how the product needs to be designed from an industrial design or, or a manufacturing standpoint is really helpful to have some basic uh, knowledge of manufacturing processes. And I, I actually bought my CNC machine not with the goal of becoming a machinist or doing anything I did. I bought it because I sounded like an idiot when I was sitting down with these <laughs> engineers and machine shops. I didn't right. know anything. Right. And, I, and it felt really uh, awkward and pathetic. And I thought, no, I want to get smarter at this. So um, it's kind of like the same thing where I could probably figure out how to get the channel set on an oscilloscope and maybe get a frequency kind of there. But like, I don't, I'd love to increase those skills. And that was how I felt with machining. I don't need to be a master. I need to be able to make basic stuff, prototype in-house, make parts right. with the goal. Then when I make the part and I'm happy, not only can I send it out, but you're so much smarter when you go to send it out because you know how the product needs to be designed. You may know how to make it. You have made some design changes and you are you represent a better customer to a machine shop because they're ultimately in the business of finding people to make money off of, just right. like any person. So the smarter you say... Uh, or sound, the more likely they're going to be to, hey, okay, we'll we'll bid those parts for you. There's nothing mm-hmm. worse than a dumb client, you know, <laughs> like who who has no idea what they right, what they want right. manufactured. But also if they're pushy and dumb, right? That's <laughs> right, that's even yeah, worse. Pushy and dumb, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Uh, it's funny. It's funny uh, being on this podcast, Dave, because I started watching your YouTube back when you started, which is about the same time I did, and mm. you've never been one to mince your words. No, <laughs> <laughs> that is a true statement. No, yes. I lack tact. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, speaking of too, I mean, does that does that play into the whole uh, wanting to learn? Because I mean, at least in my head, uh, you know, the picture of the machinist, the old school machinist, is you know closer to AVE than uh, <laughs> than you know your yeah, right. kind grandfather. You know, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, there's there's less of a prototypical machinist these days because honestly, you would probably be you could potentially be a phenomenal machinist or play a role in a machine shop if you're really good at computer gaming because really oh. using Fusion 360 and some of the advanced CAM stuff is more to do with kind of hacking software uh, than it is necessarily being able to, you know, really, really crank down on a vice. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And swear at it. And... Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. All right. Yeah. That, uh, that, that document I was talking about, the uh, it was the Gorilla Guide to Machining. Have you ever seen that one? No. Uh, so it was it by a, a Google engineer. I've talked about it a couple times on this show. Um, it is just this fantastic, you know, tome. Of, and it's just a bunch of web pages, really. But it's just, it was basically kind of comparing. He was doing like a little universal gear um, setup. And basically, mm-hmm. it was really, really tiny stuff. And basically, you showed comparison of like, this is where 3D printers are fit into this. And this is where, uh, you know, uh, a milling machine fits into this. And then he was doing um, poured molds with like vinyl. I guess it's vinyl. Um so so yeah so that's what that's what got me into the whole thing in the first place, uh, and so that's how I got kind of intoxicated with the idea of a machine. But the expectation was that I'd be building these things. So that that's what that's what I was trying to get at is like where, you know, where should people set their expectations when they're you know when they're thinking about going to a machine shop? Like what what do what do people usually need to make at a machine shop as a beginner? Well, uh, what do you mean? Well, like it. 
So so you, you can get someone in front of a 3D printer and be like, go to Thingiverse and you know you can see all the things that you could build, right? Right. Whereas right. if you have a beginner and you're like, here's a milling machine, what would you tell that person that they're probably going to build with it? You know what I mean? Like as a beginner. Got it. So so the best way to answer that would be think about making a part that requires only what they call 2.5 uh, axes. In other right. words, um, a true three-dimensional shape. Let's pick something like an Xbox controller. Most people probably know what that looks like. It's got a lot of surfaces and curves. Mm. It's a relatively complex part. Mm. Um, that's not something that you're going to just walk up to a machine even if you've been using them for a few weeks or months and be able to machine the actual controller or even really the mold for the controller. Although ironically, the mold wouldn't be, a basic mold would actually be pretty easy because you could hold a large block and just machine the negative. Uh-huh. Um, what would be relatively easy are these two and a half degree parts. So in other words, think about if you wanted to machine a custom case to hold an Arduino or a microprocessor or a project box that had a gasket for an O-ring so that it could be sealed against the elements, mm-hmm. you're able to hold on to a square part that fits into a vise. You're able to machine around it. You're able to machine inside of it. So the reason it's called two and a half degrees or 2.5 axis is that you're usually moving the XY. You know, CNC machines work on a the old Cartesian coordinate system. So they move on XY X is left to right, Y is front to back. And then Z is really only lifting up to move the tool over to a different area and then back down, and then it's going to cut in X, Y. Does that make sense? Yep. So your traditional X, Y parts um, are relatively easy to make, and uh, most people now are pretty familiar with the capabilities and the limitations of 3D printers and the time and cost and so forth. So machining is nice because let's say I need to make a custom height, you know, uh, block to hold a, a bearing for a motor and it's got to have some ability to hold some torque and rigidity. That's a great example of a part where you could have some tapped holes in a bracket with a custom sized hole to press a bearing in. That's relatively easy work to do. Got okay. it. Can yeah. I, with my dummy knowledge here, can I guess what a three axis milling machine is like? So instead of the drill coming down straight, so there's just the one Z axis, that can actually angle and tilt. Is that correct? Cannot, I- incorrect. No. No? Uh, no, incorrect. Uh, that's strike one, Dave. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it what it so can obvious. do is... Yeah. Well, it's, it's, great to, it's funny. It's great mm-hmm. to hear um, you ask this because it's. A, I think it's important that people know this. It's yeah, simple. I, um, yeah. The Tell drill me. or t- the tool can move up and down. That's your Z or Z for yep. the rest Zed. of the world. Yep. <laughs> and then... It's. I always just joke that it's like the Willy Wonka elevator. It can go left to right, right. or front yeah. to back. <laughs> so instead of a drill, which actually drills aren't really used a ton, we do use them, but what we really use a lot are what are called end mills. So those actually cut on the side of the tool. Right. So think yep. about dropping a tool down and then cutting through the part. Um, so it, there are machines that will tilt and turn and twist. Those are four or five axes and more. Oh, so that they're not three <laughs> axes; they're four or five. Right. Correct. Right. And that's okay. that's a whole right. other yep. world. I think on the show before we've talked about the Jay, Do you remember that Pocket NC? Do you remember that one? It was like oh, a little yes, green right. one. Yeah, that yeah. was a that was a five axis machine. Right. And that was right. pretty complicated for what it was, but it's you know it's, it could do a lot of different angles. Uh-huh. And they always right. like show. What's the one they always show, John? They show like a, a turbine blade or something. I, I, exactly. Like yeah. an yeah. impeller. Oh, okay. Yeah. One that they love curves showing that and stuff. twists around. Exactly. And, right. Yep, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. Right. Got to get. Got to get that demo part right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, no, but it, it's without going off on too much of a tangent. You know, traditionally five axis was that crazy. Like we need to machine a you know impeller for a nuclear power plant or something. But mm. really, most five axis is what's called three plus two. Same thing, like I just mentioned, where you're really only orienting the part in a different direction. What's great is, um, let's say, you need to machine a part which has features on the top. And on four sides with five axis, you can do all of it in one program in one setup. So it's actually a lot easier to do uh, in that case to get your completed part without having to say, okay, now I need to flip the part. Now I need to rotate it. Now I need to set it back up and measure it and find out where it is and so forth. Yeah. And that's usually uh, the video I always point people at is that Mori Seiki, the, the helmet. I think that's right. only a five axis. It's like an aluminum helmet where they machine the whole damn thing. And it's just, it's. <laughs> but it's that's simultaneous porn. five. There you're yeah. actually moving all of them at once. Oh, tr- oh, I see. I see. So you're saying most, that, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's like an industry joke that most, you know, 89% of statistics are made up on the spot. But, you know, 90. <laughs> 92% of five axis machining is really, I'm just going to twist the part over so it's on its side, lock it in place, and then go do some work on it. 
Got it. Okay. So it's just like different right. reference planes, really. Right. Okay. And so what are the what are the materials that people are usually uh, machining as well on, on these kind of milling machines? And we guys were just talking about milling machines too, right? Correct. There's lathes as well. Those are your two, for sure, the most common two uh-huh. machine types. Um, most people, many people work with aluminum. It's lightweight. It's relatively inexpensive. It's easy to machine. It's very common. Um, but you can work with steels. You can work with stainless steels. You can get into exotic materials. Um, you can use things like titanium, which are have benefits of being like biologically inert. Um, really, mo- there's no practical limitation on materials. You can also machine wood, plastics, etc. Cool. Okay. How do you how do you machine a titanium piece? Because they're so hard. How do you? No. Is it titanium on titanium? Like how do you? What pieces what, used what make, to I'm do? I'm curious. It? What makes you think it's hard? Oh, I did just from uh, what. Uh, yeah, I guess I people have told too. me like it's yeah. like isn't it like really expensive to machine it's titanium? Wait, I know that I used to use it for oh, okay. Sticks. No, I I just yeah. got that impression over the years that titanium was really like not easy to machine. Am uh, I wrong? Everything you said is different. Right. Um, <laughs> expensive, hard, easy to right. machine. No, um, it is expensive. Uh, it is funny. There's some interesting, and I'm not a titanium expert, but uh, there's this sort of titanium market, which is that most of the titanium that's created, there's different grades, um, or sorry, let me explain this a different way. Most of my friends that buy titanium have realized that a lot of the titanium that falls into our hands, meaning I'm not (laughs) Boeing, I'm not Lockheed Martin, we are getting scraps or remnants or or, or the leftovers of run. No, seriously. Yeah. So titanium isn't like aluminum where we just smelt huge amounts in the world and you can buy whatever you want, whenever you want. Titanium is a little bit more difficult to get uh, or expensive. Um, It's not that hard to machine. It's just that it's easy to machine it incorrectly and thus have it. um, It's kind of like, I don't know, soldering a a small SMT. It's actually really easy once you've done it a few times, but it's really easy to screw it up. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's all. And hence waste cost and hence why it's expensive. Oh, right. more and people get frustrated. One of, one of the reasons, yeah. Right. It, right. It's not particularly strong. I mean, it depends on how you're defining strength. But no, it's really, it's, it's lightweight. Um, that's about it. Okay. So, so John, how, how about, like, w- you obviously have learned a lot of this stuff. I, I, didn't, I didn't actually realize, I thought you had a machining background too. So, like, I have no. to apologize about that. But, like, I mean, what was your process as you were, like, going getting into this field? I mean, what, how the hell did you get to where you are? You know, like, <laughs> you no, know, lit- you, literally, you, literally, you figured it 20- out. Yeah. I, I bought, I mean, it's, what's funny is it's all on YouTube. You can literally, I highly <laughs> discourage anybody from yeah, doing yeah, this, right. but <laughs> you can go back and see me, like I'm putting tools Bumbling in the machine around. wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And you know, that's what's it's great. You know, I feel like an old man when people are like, oh, kids have got it so easy these days. But you know, it's so much easier now because the the system has worked itself out. There are very, there are relatively few choices when it comes to software. And that's a good thing. It's really good that there's really only a couple of packages and they're great. Um, I bounced around a bunch because, you know, you never knew. It's like I used Eagle, I used Fritzing, I used these web plugins. I was like, what do I do for basic electronics work? Um, and uh, I just just kept doing it. Uh, I really just did. It took, took 10 years, but uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. great. Speaking of packages, can we start? <laughs> can we get into packages? Because uh, we discussed this a bit before the show, but um, David, to my offsider, David Ledger, he uh, <laughs> made this video because he's like an MCAD guru, right? He loves uh-huh. like he's a, like a solid works expert. Well, you know, right, so right, he, right. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, he's done lots of complex stuff in them, so he kind of knows what he's doing. And and we, he thought we were looking for a package, like for the EEV blog, right? Like to buy one for us, because we're manufacturing the new micro current is, uh, sorry, the new micro supply project we're working on is going to have like a custom case, and we're always doing little three cool. D parts. So we need a package, right? We need to sure, sure. sort of pick and standardize on a package. So he was kind of reviewing like just internally himself, these different packages to, you know, uh, choose which one to go with. He wanted, of course, SolidWorks because he, he always used that because he had a free student license, right? When right, he, when he right. went to university, right? That's where he learned it. And so, but then when it come to me having to actually pony up the money to buy the software, he just went, oh, let's use SolidWorks. And I went, how much? And he went, oh, I don't know, eight ten thousand $10,000. And I went, no, thanks. Um, <laughs> you know, like just to do simple <laughs> Like what? Right. What I thought were relatively simple things, 
right? So we tried uh, Rhino, and which he had used before and he thought was quite good, and um, Onshape, which is a free online one. And we compared those three. And so, I, so I told him, hey, why not just shoot a video? You know, actually dicking around with these and, and comparing them. And it sounded like a good idea until the... <laughs> until we uploaded it and people started commenting and um yeah i think we did, broke did we you, broke did, the internet did, did you find the trolls <laughs> uh, we, we, we found the they uh found the, yeah, the yeah. mcad trolls yeah <laughs> you you woke and, the trolls i see and yeah. yes and the, by far the biggest complaint was what the hell are you doing you didn't include fusion 360 as oh, if it's like funny. you know as if like that was the tool of choice and we were just so dumb for not doing that it's just it's simply because he had never used it before so and yeah, then a lot of the other complaints were how dare you compare SolidWorks to rhino and to onshape there are three entirely like apples and oranges and pears yeah kind very, of thing very, um, uh, very poor judgment on your part Dave. Yeah, right. okay well you know <laughs> no Sam, John, have, have, have you have you been in a similar <laughs> uh, scrap is before this, is that what i'm yeah. hearing uh i i have uh I have been a strong believer that you make your own happiness. Uh, we were joking about the fellow Clickspring and how what a phenomenal he do, job do, he does on his YouTube videos and the projects yep. that he makes. It's the carpenter, not the tools. I don't care what machine you use, what yep. software you use. People get in such a rat race and they're concerned if I'm not, they're not doing the right thing mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> well, Altium, will, Eagle, you know. Right. Yeah, good yep. grief. Kikehead. Um, and yep, Kikehead, yep. So, so the the short answer is um, Fusion 360, which is an Autodesk product, and Onshape, which is a startup, but it has a twist to that, mm -hmm. are the relatively new players in this sector. They're cloud-based models. Everybody uses the F word. They're not actually supposed to be free. Right. Uh, Fusion yep. is, is allegedly free for students, as is, frankly, anything these days. Um, and Fusion is free for hobbyists and startups. But ah. Uh, right. You are supposed to pay for Fusion. Uh, they don't. Three, they yeah, three hundred, four hundred bucks a year, or something like that. Oh, that's exactly. not too bad. Okay, right. No, no. Yeah. Uh, Onshape is a slightly different business model, and I think what they do is you have to start paying if you don't want your projects public. Public, or you go and then a for certain... storage space, we hit right. the free storage space limit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Onshape is by and large the old SolidWorks team. Right, yes. Right, right. so a lot by Dassault, oh, yeah. and then they switched over and did a yeah. new thing, right? Right. And so raised 60-plus million. <laughs> a lot of venture capital yeah. money, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, the thing I don't like about Onshape, and the reason for me Fusion was an easier choice, is that uh, we live in a world where, frankly, there are too many options. And options, you know, there's yeah. a, some awesome business books and studies on. Every time you're forcing a customer or somebody to make a choice, it taxes them. And for me, right. running a YouTube channel on educational content... Uh, if everybody's using different software or in Onshape's case, they don't, it's not a fully baked software. The idea is that they've got kind of an app store so you can have different plugins, different cam, different ECAD, different renders. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no continuity for learning there. Right. Um, Fusion also happens to have really good cam, which is the stuff machinists care about to go run their CNC machine. So mm -hmm. um, that's why we use Fusion. Fusion also has just crushed it. Um, I've, I think, believe it, I think relative to Onshape, Fusion is doing a phenomenal job too on user base. So there's this great community around it. Um, it's mm -hmm. not as robust or powerful as something like SolidWorks, but as you already discovered, SolidWorks is five to eight thousand dollars plus yep uh for me we used to be a paid solidworks user and it was like 1200 bucks a year just for the quote unquote yeah. maintenance, maintenance yeah. thing yeah yeah, 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 yeah let, of course. let me tell you i never had any maintenance done <laughs> right. on my solidworks right now here's um, the oh sorry no continue no go, go ahead launch well here's the thing right um we're, we're like he's making he's designing this little like it's only like five millimeters by like five millimeters, like a little foot or something for our product and yeah. and he's going i can't you know look and he's spending hours and hours just like blending these little radii curves in <laughs> like um you know rhino or whatever and he's going i can't like we need to buy this ten thousand dollar package i can't do like this is just ridiculous right. you know right. like and, and me dummy me going like we i just want a simple extruded aluminium case like i just like <laughs> like it's not like for me it doesn't seem like rocket science but he's trying to explain to me how 
Those like, kid, kids these days, huh, crap. Dave? You know? right, if, yeah. if, even though he loved Rhino and thinks it's really good, he says, I just can't do this simple thing. Well, I, you know, so it right, takes me well, hours to do this simple thing in Rhino. That takes me 30 seconds in SolidWorks. And I'm going, well, I don't know. Like, so <laughs> Rhino is great software for certain uses and certain people. Right. Um, I wouldn't say a bad thing about it, except in your shoes, Dave, or anybody who's listening, Dear God, don't use Rhino. Uh, <laughs> right, okay, right. Rhino is a NURBS modeling software that happens to be really good in the example I give is if you're designing a yacht, like a hundred foot yacht, mm, Rhino right. has certain capabilities for for curved surfaces that are amazing. It's I, It's been a year since I used Rhino, but I don't believe it's parametric, which is right. brutal for what, what most of us actually want to do, which is we want to say, oops, I made a mistake. I, that needs to be six millimeters, not five. I want to go update that. In yeah, Rhino, yeah. Yeah. G- good grief, grab a Snickers bar. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, because then you have to go. Yeah, that's yep. that's a great point. Because then if you have to adjust the yep. one thing for five to six millimeters, everything right. that's dependent on that is now not tied to it. Right. That's so, so that's like the power of parametric right. in the first place. So, what is the best package for someone like me who just wants to design simple custom cases that I might either get machined or like uh, either extruded and or uh, injection molded? Fusion three sixty. Fusion 360. Okay, yeah. thank you. He's bought and right. paid for it, folks. <laughs> no, it's, it's just well, I, that, like, I, I think it's crazy for me to go out and to spend like $10,000 on a on a software package that, you know, like I, to me, we're yeah. using the simpler, we're doing the simplest stuff right. possible. We're right. not making a, an Xbox controller or a Tesla Roadster. You know, well, here's, here's a question, John, too. Is is it would it be worthwhile? I mean, like, honestly, with what Dave's talking about, would it be better for if, if Dave didn't have David too there, right? So David too obviously is a little bit more proficient on this stuff. If Dave was just being Dave, <laughs> should he be even doing this in the first place, right? Or should he be or should I just farm a it sheet, out? sheet of paper and yeah, being like, here's or, or what I think I should I just I want. pay someone? Should I go and freelancer yeah. or whatever? Well, right, I mean, so just or just going or like even just going to buy a project box, you know what I mean? Like, where, yeah. where do these lines oh, fit? Uh, for sure. I mean, look, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but um, to give you an idea, a proper injection mold, there's lots of different types of molding, but most people are familiar with injection molding. If you're not, the best example would be a Lego brick. That's an ABS plastic. It's injection molded, meaning plastic pellets are heated up and then they're pushed through a screw, which is a way of transferring torque and under multiple hundreds of tons that material plasticizes and flows into a mold that's been incredibly, insanely precision made or machined, or sometimes they're what's called EDM, which is electro discharge machine, which uses spark erosion, super cool stuff. Um, but that's incredibly complex. A, to have a mold for something like a small Lego brick made would probably be, I'm going to just take a guess, Forty to two hundred thousand dollars. No, uh, no. In uh, China, you can get injection molded uh, uh, NRE cost of like five hundred bucks. Yeah, you really, I mean, like, I think. Have so. you done that? Have you tried that? I, I've uh, gotten. Clo- I've got. I've got stuff <laughs> made for five grand. I've got. I've gotten a mold made for five grand in China. That, All right. Okay. Well, so but, number one, but, China. but it's not. It's not a Lego, right? No, yeah. right. no, it's, it's the just precision, a, right. the life yeah. of the mold, right. whether it's been yeah, hard. Yeah, of course. The, yeah. the, the big, a big part of the cost is that yeah. the production molds have to have sure. cooling, cooling lines run through them. Okay. The other thing is that a lot of mold shops won't do what's called throw somebody else's mold. Uh-huh. Not because they're trying to make you buy the mold from them, but it's like, hey, I've got a, Uh-oh. I've got a hundred thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar press. I'm not throwing some random guy's mold. Right. If it's not designed right. for this, for oh, this thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes right. Sense. right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting. But, um, okay. So, so but also it's m- the number m- you're going to make too, expensive. right? You're, you're going to make a if you're going to make a, a ten million a ten million shot mold is going to cost a lot more than a right. ten thousand yeah. shot mold, right? Uh, of like the, uh, the, the the hardness of the steel, the uh, precision of the thing, right? I'm not really qualified to answer that. Um, my guess though is that here here I'll put it this way: I ten, I, I, de- I do a decent job of keeping my ear to the what's happening in manufacturing and stuff. And it's still not the case that people who have a thousand of something are doing it with what we would consider injection molding. Now they may have mm-hmm. a shop where there's like, it's a thing called like a Morgan press. Like they have at M oh, yeah. hub where you're, yeah. where you're doing one at a time, but that's not technically that is injection molding, but that's not what we think of as a machine that's just automatically pumping out right. thousands of hours. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, you're still better off with things like machining with 3d, 
um, printing, or what we do here at our shop is low pressure mold. So there's a ton of ways to mold things that are not under the multi hundred ton pressure of injection molding. Hmm. And that can be for testing or it can be for you know, small run production. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now, can these software packages like uh, Fusion 360, can it do, like, are there different, do, would you design, would you model the thing a different way, so to speak, depending on whether you're extruding something, whether you're 3D printing something or whether you're injection molding something or whether you're machining something? So what you just asked is a phenomenal question because that's kind of it encapsulates all different questions about manufacturing. Yeah, um, of course. They're, they're mainly the four, four different types, right? Yeah. Uh, so 3D printing tends to be limitless with the exception of things like overhang, depending on your su- you have, you've got support material. Yeah. Machining has, um, has very real limitations. Well, actually, I'm going to answer your question a different mm. way in a second. But um, Fusion 360 does a great job of helping you at least understand that or start the framework and then actually has something called like draft analysis. When you do any oh, sort yeah. of molding, you need to have some draft or taper so that the part will actually come out mm-hmm. of the mold. Uh, it's actually a phenomenal little trivia nugget, which is if you've ever used a Lego, uh, where's the draft? That's a great I have no idea. Where is the draft? Is it the Dave? inside? Dave? No, I don't know. Exactly. Legos <laughs> are a rare example of an injection molded product where the outside is square and perpendicular, and they actually run the draft through the ID of a Lego. So next time you have a Lego... Uh, nearby look in the inside huh that's interesting um, uh yeah hmm. I, I, I actually one of our former guests was uh we used to work there too he said that the static buildup on those molds are really crazy too something about oh, really? the injection process yeah huh. like they get to hundreds wow. of volts oh cool. i'll tell you what i am not a complete dummy at this i found a package that was so suited <laughs> to a dummy like me, um, have you ever used the e-machine shop software? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have. Like, but, but to me, sure. like as a dummy, not knowing anything, I opened that package and I designed a custom case for my three D for my um, scientific calculator watch with, sure. with, in virtually no effort, and then it ran the analysis to tell me whether or not it could be machined. And so, I thought that was a, that was my my mind was blown how easy that was, <laughs> and every right. CAD package that I've tried after using that is like, this is so raw and right. like, how it's do like I even start? It's like a pro tool start? versus like a, a friendly yeah, tool, yeah. right? Right, right. right. I, look, I, 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 here, I know you, Dave, just through watching your technical videos, if I had an hour with you, mm-hmm. um, you, you would be running Fusion 360 and smiling. Cool. <laughs> now, <laughs> right. now, you could go watch our YouTube videos or other people's yep. videos or whatever. The the one of the one of the few drawbacks to Fusion, the name yep. comes from the fact that Autodesk is fusing all these different technologies and capabilities into one, mm-hmm. which comes with the perils of there's a lot of different ways you can use Fusion. You know, the same people like me that are using Fusion to machine parts are also using the sculpt tools or the patch environment tools in Fusion to do very organic biological shapes. Those are totally different. Um, right. inputs and outputs. And so it's tough because some people I think see fusion and they see like the Pixar lamp being designed and they're like, well, that's not what I want. And I'm like, no, um, <laughs> I, I basically use fusion. Uh, I have my fusion set up. So it's basically identical to SolidWorks. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's very, very easy. I, I have to ask John too, because we're going to get crap for it. If I don't, um, what do you think about the whole cloud-based thing? Because obviously me and Dave have railed against cloud-based tools for ECAD stuff for a long time, and I'm still on that side of things. But uh, what do you think about it being kind of cloud-captive and your stuff's kind of stuck with them if you, you know? So I have um, I should probably disclose this. I'm on this like sort of informal advisory board for the Autodesk Fusion team or whatever. Okay. So That's fair. Yeah. I, I have uh, strong opinions um Autodesk isn't backing down anytime soon on their de- dedication to the cloud. Yes. Um, it has a the couple cloud. of... Li- <laughs> <laughs> anytime yeah. soon, he did say that. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, right. Um, Are they still not confident? <laughs> the collab... Well, we can, Sorry, I don't, I'm just trolling. I tend to be a very positive person. Um, <laughs> there are, that has no place here, John. Come on. <laughs> no, look, I was when we were a solid workshop, I used um, actually Sugar Sync, but just like Drock. Uh, Dropbox or Google Drive. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, fun fact: I already had the cloud through that. Like, I didn't need this, you know, forced uh, layer uh, there. Now, it does have some benefits. There's some pretty cool mm-hmm. stuff we can do. We can share, like, for instance, we have 
sort of five or six different people here in the shop, I can share through the cloud the tool libraries across all the machines. That's actually really important. Yeah. Um, so there has some benefits. The reliability is tough um, because when it goes down, you know, I'm not a hobby anymore. I have a payroll. I've right. got machines yeah. to run. Um, Autodesk does a great job with it. There's a couple things they could do a little bit better. But so to answer your question, to stop beating around the bush, if I had a checkbox that said use Fusion you know, within our shop or use Fusion in the cloud, uh, I would pa- pass on the cloud. Okay. I mean, that's right. fair. And I think yeah, I, I, mostly I think about the, the longevity piece, really. You know, you're making parts that you want to be making for the next 30 years, maybe, right? That's yeah. not unheard of for machine shops, right? And if you can't open the part in 10 years because so, so that's not really true that there that's and i i've been emphatic with uh making sure autodesk clarifies this because people think that it's a long-term bait and switch so um all of your fusion stuff can still be cached locally and that cached file format is a file that you can figure out how to open in other software <laughs> but it. if, if so, your company internet goes down can you and does your shop stop like if you're so, reliant upon the cloud uh, it depends on whether it's Tuesday or Friday. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. no, so the way Fusion works is anything you've opened is cached locally. There's a couple little hiccups to that that aren't worth getting into, but right. generally speaking, we're fine. Um, Sorry, but, does uh, for Fusion for dummy? I haven't even downloaded it. Does it like is it an executable that runs on my Windows machine? That's so. That's the other huge difference. Fusion is software you install, whereas Onshape right. is just yeah, just yeah, a no, web, just web browser. browser. Yeah, yeah. It's browser based. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so, cool. so in other words, there are people, I do not recommend this, but there are people uh, who will literally start using Fusion, force it into offline mode and just use it that way. Yeah. I'd say if people want to use a, have a comparison, I think like, so like Upverter is like Onshape, right? So that's all browser based. Oh, it's, it's tied yeah. to the server. And then uh, what's the one, Dave? Um, the Altium Maker. Oh, the Altium uh, Circuit, uh, circuit Maker. Yeah, Circuit Maker. maker. Circuit Although maker. I think that the Fusion's a little better on. I mean, yeah, a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, circuit on the maker is an executable local. download, but you must yeah. be able to. Uh, no, no, but it can. It they realize this problem, and when it first came out, yeah, it was cloud only, and then they introduced very quickly introduced the feature to uh, actually cache the file locally. Yeah, so right. you, you could actually go offline for a while. I think three days if you you could work for three days, and then you had to reconnect or something. Yeah. So Phone home. yeah, yep, yep. something okay. like that. Can I uh, can I go back to your question about what yes. how to design something and the capabilities? Yeah. Yes, please. So so this is ex- actually super exciting. Um, Autodesk has this kind of like quasi public. Um, I think more is coming soon. Software called Dreamcatcher. Um, I guess that's maybe a crap unlike- name. That's I'm <laughs> sorry. That is just a. <laughs> <I> well, love- <laughs> what 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 freaking committee came up with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I will give them uh, some credit because if even if you think the name stinks, what you're about to hear is pretty cool. Okay. So uh, most of the people in the rest of the world know what Formula One is. I feel like it's not as popular in the U.S., but yeah. they used within Dreamcatcher, um, it has a learning algorithm or intelligence to it. They fed it the PDF of the F1 rulebook, and they said – we need to design a new, I forget what the example was. I think it was sort of like the roll cage around the driver's head area. Right. It was smart enough to read the design parameters and the FIA rules on weight and on size and oh, envelope no. and tensile load. Then, you ready for this, Dave? And I've seen this in person. It has every single different manufacturing technique with sliders for cost, time to market, oh, capabilities. Oh, you can from just parametrically sheet, change sheet metal, them. No, no, no. Sheet metal to 3D printing to machining to five-axis oh. machining to water jet to hydraulic molding to injection molding to casting to resins. And you have all these dynamic and variables, and it will literally print out 72,000 permutations that meet the design requirements, that meet the tensile strength requirements based on what machine tools you have available. That's huh. insane. We'll do like yeah. a birchwood uh, roll cage or something too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Very now, here, cool. So that is awesome. Now here's my question with Fusion 360. Right. Will it does it have the capability to, to check my design? Dummy Dave comes along after his three day training course and designs a file which I want to send off because I don't own a CNC machine. I want to send off sure. to my the CNC shop. Can it check that for me to make sure I'm not doing anything dumb? That's what I liked mm-hmm. about e the e machine shop software 
Is that before? No, it was like tied into the, no, machine, the okay, process, right. right? Yeah. Yeah, it was tied into the process. No, nothing so, like that. So, so how do I know that I'm doing something wrong? I'd, I'd have to go back and forth <laughs> with the machine shop twenty times, Dave, and they just slap you, put, me you over post the a head. video of it, and then and then everybody tells you. Oh, then everyone tells me, right? Yeah, in in a hundred different ways. You right. Know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you know. It's a great question. My guess, and it's been years since I pulled up eMachine Shop, my guess is what it's telling you is pretty basic stuff that mm. that uh, software like Fusion could do, but then they're representing some ability to to, yeah, to, yeah. to represent what the, your model is good and not good. And, and the reality is that's probably pretty sacrificial in, within eMachine Shop. Um, so there there isn't. I, I don't have a good answer for you. Yeah. Well, maybe a, a good question too is, so, okay, so let, let's keep using Dave's example of, you know, he wants to design a project box, right? Yep. So what would you start constraining on those kind of in that situation, right? Would you would you tell someone to like just go and design a custom thing right out or I mean No, absolutely not. Okay. Um even if you're even if you are a delusional entrepreneur with aspirations of selling <laughs> tens of thousands, um you need to find an existing box and just use it or you can take that hybrid ground of take an existing product or box and we actually know companies that do this bring it in and then modify it, engrave it, tweak it. Um, yeah, right. Do that for the first thousand. And you're, guess what? You're going to learn. You're going to iterate. You're going to design. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 most people, most people personally or their venture capital backers do not endorse you trashing a or throwing away an injection mold because you design, you want <laughs> yeah, to do yeah, a design right, change. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, that's, so, that's so, fun. So, so you've got to, yeah. Well, as as a beginner who's trying to do this stuff, how do I know like how thin I can make the walls of my box, how small I can make the holes, how deep and what axes I can like what the machines are capable of doing? I can kind of guess using my mm -hmm. generic engineering knowledge, you know. Um, yeah. Or even like yeah. standardized drill sizes, right? Yeah, like that's like something a, I always uh, well, struggle I with. Know. It's like, oh, it's well, like, there's probably standard drill sizes and that would speed it up. But like, there's just so much base knowledge that I don't have in the mechanical realm. And and then it gets like uh, probably for machining, I can kind of use my intuition to figure that out. But then when you're talking about injection molding stuff, and then you've got the pull problems with pullback in the of the molds or whatever it's called, right. and all sorts of like stuff like that, I have no clue about. Well, so there's a bu there's a bunch of ways to answer this. Obviously, a, a short time framed audio podcast isn't going to come close to like covering of it course. all. Um, <laughs> what I would suggest that is there a YouTube the most channel practical. they can subscribe to? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's funny because I, I tend to um, hang around machinists a lot, so these questions actually don't come up because we all are kind, of, you know, we're all kind of preaching to the choir here. Uh -huh. um, the let me answer it two ways. One is don't worry too much about that. Get right. um, get your design done from what it needs to do, and then you need to, you know part of entrepreneurship is yep. recognizing what you're not good at and finding yep. the people that can help you. So you need to have a friend or a formal service. Um, we use Upwork weekly here for stuff from electronics designing mm -hmm. to uh, graphics design to all kinds of stuff. Go spend twenty bucks or fifty bucks and say, give me a ten minute video commenting on what I need to change on this design. Here's what I want it to mm. do. That's for, for sure the best recipe that I can give somebody who's really uh, new to this. Uh, if you want yep. a little bit more of a direct technical answer, um, whole diameters and stuff aren't really a big deal on modern CNC machines or drill sizes, but think about this. Uh, your t traditional three-axis machine, which going beyond three-axis gets pretty expensive. Um, so right. for keeping things reasonable, think about things like a for us you know eighth inch or quarter inch drill bit so you know two four six millimeters and up not going more beyond like three to five times diameter so for example i don't want you to send me a part uh that has a two millimeter radius 20 millimeters deep right a, okay i, I yep. can't i can't i can't machine that reasonably mm -hmm. right. now a five axis machine i could tip the head and come at it from an angle uh -huh. blah 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 so keep the parts, think about it like holding a pencil and think about how you would make that part if your pencil was actually a cutting tool and you had to keep the pencil perpendicular to the part. Yeah. yeah. So no, this is good too, because this yeah. is like a, uh, this is some of like knowing the, the process also informs the design, right? Exactly. So, oh yeah, of course. So, yeah. so, so Dave and I are co-designing a box, right? We're just co-designing a box and we do want it to be injection molded for whatever God unknows reason, right? When should we talk to machinists? When should we go to a shop and start like getting stuff quoted or getting, getting something, uh, you know, getting some kind of feedback? 
I mean, I would do it now. Um, it, it, this is sort of a side thing, but uh, send it to me and I'll, I'll do it as a compliment, no charge. And if eventually, if it's something we can share on our YouTube channel, it'd be a super fun example of saying, hey, here's what I like, here's what I don't like. Um, <laughs> the other thing is- I was just saying, uh, when me and Dave are not actually designing anything together, I'm not that bold <laughs> to di- design something with Dave. <laughs> not. We would never talk to each oh, other again. Yeah. Hilarious. I'm just saying this is an example of, you know what I mean? Is, like, t- yeah. Is Dave critical? It's a little bit, nah. yeah. I don't know. Have you seen his videos? No. Nah. Yeah. Um, uh, no, he, he pays <laughs> someone to, 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 you know, yell at him. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> take a look at things like uh, Zometry, which is X O M E T R Y. Proto Labs is another one. Um, uh-huh. This is the, uh, you know, e machine shop is kind of referred to as a joke in our industry. Um, but but for me, it's, it's like, it's magic. Right, it feels. Well, but, it sounds like fritzing almost. Like me and Dave right. are not like huge fritzing fans, right. but for people that are getting started, they're like, "No, this is awesome. It's it's very did, clear. It's it's something I need." You know. Here's the problem, Dave. I'm like you in the sense that like whatever you need to do to get it done. But if you actually want to get something injection molded, mm-hmm. the, and if the first thing that comes out of your mouth to the to the potential vendor is e machine shop. Oh yeah, no. It's yeah. no man, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, yeah, I, I, I know why it can be seen as a joke. But for just right. doing a simple machined part, sure. I think it's it's you know so it's so they're a tool for the job, right? Jason? I mean, like, come on, it, yeah. It's just like the PCB manufacturers. There's a lot. There's some PCB manufacturers who have their own software, and I sure, don't, yeah. you know, and you use their software, and you can only get their board made by them. Yeah, kind of it's thing. A, it's right. hard to sort of export. Almost, yeah. it. Is there yeah. like an, a service, like an right. online service or web page or something where you can like upload your file? Your Fusion 360 or SolidWorks file and it analyzes it for manufacturability. Yes. Oh, yeah. see, that's yes. what I want. That's what I want. And it's free. Oh, is that Proto Labs? Where is that? That Pro- thing? is that? Yep. Um, so Proto right. Labs is the one that is probably the best known. Um, okay, they cool. Ha- they do all their machining in house. They have this like it looks like a server farm of Haas machines. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, it looks photoshopped. Um, right. We use Zometry, um, which again is odd spelling. Similar front end interface where you go to the website, you upload your file, and within like twenty seven seconds, it gives you a price. Nice. Oh, that's nice. That, yeah. That's so, right. that 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 is e machine shop, but for right. any package, right? Kind right. of e machine shop, but uh, like we actually send like significant amounts of work to the to yeah. geometry. Like oh, it's, I, right. I trust right. it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I know, yeah, I know a uh, plethora too. They do, uh, they're, they're a plugin, I think for uh, not SolidWorks. Right. What's right. the other one? But that's another one where it's like, it's an online interface and they're, they're trying to like remove the, the, the machinist from the situation, but it's more exactly. about like constraining it to the point where it could be more automated more than they're not trying to, you know, put machinists out of jobs. They're just trying to remove the simple jobs basically. Well, so that's what I like about Isometry is that they will actually, um, they don't have machine, well, they actually do have machines as backup, but they partner with other shops like mine yeah, where, right. um, or shops that have capabilities and they know what those shops are good at. So one shop is really good at lathe parts or small parts or big molds. And so they kind of play broker, but it's a lot more. Um, oh, oh so, so you're like, you're like a feed shop to that too, huh? Exactly. Well, no, we're not. We don't actually do work for them anymore. Oh, you don't. Okay. We, we looked into it, but we're. Uh, transitioning our businesses, which is a whole other story. But we have sourced parts through Zometry. Mm-hmm. Um, and the point is that the, the person that's making those parts is a is a pretty dialed in shop. It's pretty high certainty of success. So like I would have no problem with somebody using Zometry as a key value proposition in a business plan for saying, hey, this is how we're going to execute on our idea. That's legit. E-machine right. job is, is not. Now the Zometry is not going to tell you Hey, you need to change this fill or this dimension is no good, but um, you can upload it and you get a price, and then you <laughs> can upload different what, versions. Yes, uh, and right. you, you with that's me? what I was going to ask. Yeah. It does the uh, machining slash manufacturing industry work similar to the PCB industry in that when you send your PCB file, for example, to a manufacturer, they a, a lot of them will not tell you. That yeah. they'll just say yes, they'll we can do it, it. Yeah. and yeah. and he's surprised. Like even though they had to use their most expensive process and this and this, and they'll just do it without telling you. Hey, if you just move these two things, we could do it for half the price because we right. use a different process. Is that will? Is there a like a, a are there like if you send it to is a Chinese a machine? Huh? Yeah, is there a feedback <clears throat> thing? Will if you if I send it to a Chinese. Uh, machining shop, will they just do it and charge me whatever they need to, or will they come back? 
and tell me that I'm, you know, give me some feedback. Um, so as a provider of machine shop services, when we're doing work for other people, we absolutely tell them that that's something we do. Right. Um, that's an easier conversation to have because <laughs> we tend to work with yep. people that, well, you know, we work with a lot of artists or people right. that have never done work before. Um, Just, so <laughs> again, going back to the new sort of web 2.0 or I don't know what, 4.0, I forget, tra lose track of what number we're on in the internet these days, but the latest and greatest, these proto labs, the zometries, um, they will help you with that. Like zometries example, they have in-house engineering that will actually help you oh. out. Is now, that a paid service? Will they? No, no, no but I'm guessing, I'm guessing yeah. they kind of vet you. Like, yeah, they're it's not easy to get their attention right. if you're going to yeah, buy 10,000 of something. Right, that okay. one. right, yeah. right. Of course. Uh, Right, which is tough for beginners too, right? Especially people that are in this this whole space. Right. So, it kind so of comes back to again of like, wh wh where should where should people really be starting? And I think I think what you were saying was Project Box, but no. By far, by far, what I would encourage would be, um, well, go watch some videos on you know, go watch eight hours of YouTube on CNC machine, and you'll learn yeah. a lot. That's uh, true. Just from that. And get or get make a friend. You know, uh, entrepreneurship is tough. You don't do it in a vacuum. It's it's difficult to do it in your own garage. You've got to go 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 to a place like M Hub in Chicago, where there's people doing this, and you can pick up some nuggets of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, go look at how other parts are made and machined, and that'll give you a good idea. Yeah, it's tough without a, a starter project though, too. You know what I mean? Like, so oh, you've I, got I started, to have a real project. You've yeah, got exactly. to have so like when real, I started, I was like, just like, oh, I'm just going to learn machining. And that was yeah, actually, no, that was the wrong idea. Yeah, I should exactly. have had a yeah, thing right. to build. So yep. what is your go-to starter project for people? Uh, so in class, we make a widget, which is only to prove out a couple of really good processes. Uh -huh. It's just a paperweight. And then we make uh, a vice handle. So it's a pretty cool ah, uh, pro product yeah. because it's not square in the end. So it's actually, we use what are called soft jaws. So we actually custom machine uh, the jaws of the vice to hold round objects or odd shaped objects. Oh. Um, hmm. which is a what used to be a pretty complex process or something you would consider kind of intermediate and above. And now, again, we're doing that with people on day two or three. That's good. Yeah, Sweet. so the work the work holding piece is really, that's something, I did not see that coming. Right. That's another thing where I, I just kind of started willy-nilly. I didn't, I didn't understand work holding, even though all the books talk about it. I didn't, I didn't give it enough respect. And then the feeds and speeds thing. <laughs> I remember Ben Krasnow saw one of my videos. He's like, hey, man, look at this chart. You, you want to look at this chart. <laughs> right. <laughs> After I broke and, like three bits in a row. <laughs> so we share our speeds and feeds, uh, Excel file recipes to really break down. Feeds and speeds is not hard. Um, it's harder when you're trying to optimize. <laughs> oh. Like, for, No, no, no. But it, like, I'm just, for people, I don't want you, it's not an excuse to get psyched out and freaked out and uh -huh. just not know what to do. Yes, titanium is a little bit trickier. Yes, stainless steel, or if you're trying to maximize production or get insane surface finishes, yeah, it's a little bit more tricky, uh, trickier. But to get started, you shouldn't be breaking bits. Go go to our site, download our Excel file, look at our, we have a 10 minute video walking through all the basics. You, you'll have a good starter understanding. Good, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that I, I, the thing I also didn't kind of really get about it is that it's like, when you like zoom in on an end mill, it's like there's only so much material it can remove at once. Right. And it's like, so you got to either speed up the the rotation speed of the end mill and get a f faster rotation around, like, taking more material in smaller chunks, or you need to get a more rigid machine, or you need to, I don't even know what the other stuff is. You just need to move slower through the material. Well, yeah, so cutting is two different things. It's the rotation or RPMs of the tool, and then it's how fast you're moving along your XY plane. So how long, yeah, how, right. how fast is the part moving into the bit? And the way we explain it in our classes, think about a backhoe. Even if you've never actually operated a backhoe, um, you want to take that backhoe and you want to scoop some dirt out, right? Mm -hmm. A backhoe isn't meant to go take one millimeter or one sixteenth of an inch of topsoil off the top of the ground. It's meant to take, it wants to scoop, let the thing scoop in. Mm -hmm. And likewise, what you just said, you can't, you can't take two buckets worth of dirt in one bucket. So speeds and fees are easy because there's basically this recipe, which is one thousandth of an inch per flute per revolution. Done. You're good. In Australia here, man. So you got to watch out yeah. for those imperial <laughs> units. Yeah, I, I will not apologize. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, true. Red blooded American. Point oh two point oh two millimeters per, <laughs> per flute per revolution. Done. Right. right. Okay. That's right. that. That's a great. Yeah. Cool. Right. I know everything. I'm gonna. 
You're going to Goodbye. sign my hand. <laughs> yeah. So no, where should I, people... seriously, I'm going to give Fusion 360 a go because we like our, our Rhino license. We've been using Rhino and Onshape at the moment, um, just like a free license, and the license just ran out on Rhino. So we have to like, you know, right. choose a package. You know, right? How about FreeCAD? You can do that. Oh, freak. How, the, the how number do you feel about the open source people, tools, John? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, when I've asked about this and a lot of, a lot of and when I when, when we released that video, it was like, use, what is it, Open SCAD or whatever. Open SCAD, so I went, yeah. Oh, that's, try that's like it. the worst d- decision oh, like, for you. I, I, like, I've done this over the years. Oh, can you, you know, I go on Twitter. Can you recommend a CAD, like a simple mechanical CAD package that a dummy like me can use? And even, like half the people say, oh, Open SCAD or whatever. So I download it and try it and I, and I sit in at a command prompt. <laughs> or whatever like and i like are you kidding me <laughs> like oh yeah it's great try it also like, dave wasn't here but dave i don't know if you know clifford wolf uh, was the founder of that so former oh, guest he? yeah so oh, he started right. that project but oh, he's very God. software focused so i like Anyways. yeah I just... john what's your take on the open sourcing for uh, 3d cat <laughs> uh, i'm not aware of anybody who's i mean I, I, to me we no longer have a problem it's been solved for most of the people i know Fusion is adequate for people who have more complex things like super advanced, you know, you're trying to build a Tesla or you're trying to build yeah. some spine screw for medical right. industry. Then you're going to use software, frankly, probably even beyond SolidWorks. SolidWorks is actually low end yeah, in the right. crazy, you know, <laughs> there's these crazy software, Katia yep. and NX and so forth. Oh, yeah. So yep. mm-hmm. um, yeah. here's the irony. Some people that use those high end softwares are still pulling the file back into Fusion to do the machining tool paths. Mm, interesting <laughs> right yeah because it's the so right I, tool for the job right right um yeah well it's a more it's, optimized tool for the fusion does everything we need so it's kind of like um, i'm always interested in what comes out competition for sure drives innovation but um i i to me the investment in software is not just the the money to buy it but it's the time it takes time to get good uh, yes. At, at running that's, that. And so, yeah. again, I'm happy that it's now no longer something I really have to decide. Right. 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 Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. And with my choice of, um, you know, like David wants me to get SolidWorks, of course, because that's his package of choice. But then I've, I've got to think down the track. Not only is it ridiculously expensive for kind of, you know, the amount of work we're doing, um, it doesn't really justify it. But then, A, I've got to learn it. And then, B, I've got to keep, if I want to keep, you know, if David, uh, leaves for you know and like I've got to I mean, think there's only like, so much Dave like, that anyone could take so yeah you're of course, right, right yeah no no exactly yeah, yeah. but these things happen right you know yeah, I've got sure. to think long term right? of course right yeah, yeah I've got to keep using this package for like a long time and you know and um, so yeah it's it just doesn't seem to make sense whereas something that's free or low really low cost ish um, you know it's not for someone that's that competent in SolidWorks you can learn Fusion 360 in about 20 minutes. Right, it would be yep. it would be my opinion. Uh, comprehensively, extensively, no, but you no, get but it. it's yeah, it's yeah, quite course. it's quite straightforward. Got to learn the hotkeys. So, yep. uh, John, you you uh, so we're already over an hour here, but uh, if you don't mind talking about electronics a little bit, I I didn't quite realize again uh, about your background. You so you you kind of so you said you have an Arduino person or an electronics person on site. Full time. Please so, don't call them an Arduino person. Sorry, an electronics please. person. But you, he said Arduino person. <laughs> yes, so. I know he did before the show, and I I wanted to. So, so <laughs> what, what, is, what is this person doing? Fish, How about, we can know? start with that. We start with that. Oh, 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 hold on, I've got to decide whether I'm going to continue participating in this podcast. What's your problem, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Arduino, like it's the it's like e machine shop. Arduino is the e machine shop of. Oh my god, the, it all makes sense now. Yeah, and I don't and I, yeah. and I don't, and I don't care because it does <laughs> everything like. I don't care that I can't <laughs> right. run multiple interrupts or whatever because it does what I need it to do. This right. is hilarious. I now yeah. know why yeah, no, you like it's, the machine it's, shop. It's, it's the equivalent. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's right. the equivalent. That's good. That's good. Totally. No, so this is literally Analogy. what I have done. We have literally yep. brought products to market where I have fully, full got the product fully functional with an Arduino, sure. and then I send it off to an embedded guy yeah. who converts the whole thing over to a PIC chip. Yep. That's success. I don't yeah, care no, if you want fine. to criticize it. No, it's mm-hmm. fine. It's just it's just the term. The term is a bit of a joke. Yeah, you know, like yeah. So sure. so to call somebody an Arduino engineer or a you know it, it's kind of like yeah. yeah. These are these are just names. I I I'm, yeah, I'm not worried about are. this. I'm more interested. So John, your your company is actually designing full 
full designs, like full full product design then? Uh, sort of. Um, we we have brought some products to market. Um, mostly what Ed is name, he has a name. His name is Ed, not just the Arduino <laughs> yeah, guy. Right, um, <laughs> the Arduino guy. Poor Ed. <laughs> he um, he's from around here, and I uh, he was a fan of the channel, and then he actually joined a thing on a class that we did here on scraping, which is uh, scraping law. Scraping is a process of making really precision surfaces. It's how machine tools ah. were built and some still are. So when you scrape, uh, you're removing like, I don't know, a hundredth of a millimeter per right. scrape. How do, you, how do you scrape? Is there a scraping machine? How does Thank it... God, yes. Oh, I would have. Right. So <laughs> yes, what yes. is it, like a razor blade kind of thing? No, what it kind of looks like, um, do you guys have sawzalls? Like a reciprocating? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the sawzall would be in Australia. Right, um, no. Or like a <laughs> like an electric knife that like to kind oh, of okay. carve a turkey right. with. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, um, it has <laughs> yeah, a little blade on the end. of the things end. that an Aussie would call a sawzall. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that's a tough one. Crocodile, anyway, crocodile, anyway, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shake, cool, shaky cutter thing. <laughs> the cool thing about scraping, unlike say like grinding or all these other processes, is that scraping can be done in what's called the relaxed state. So you don't have to have the thing clamped down or in a whole vice or rich. So you can just scrape something super, super flat when it's relaxed and sitting on your desk or how, how can you get that accurate low, though? Well, so you have to start with, we're getting way off topic, but you have to start with a master. So most people have granite plates. Granite plates are oh, lapped in. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, once you got, if you got the surface, yeah, right. Right. Okay. So you, you yeah, do yeah. a, um, right. you use a bluing fluid to transfer the pattern and flatness and you scrape uh -huh. the blue. Anyway, yeah. we did a class on that. That's where I met Ed. Uh, we had a lot of similar interests. I don't have time, unfortunately, because of the real, the business and, and yeah. machining and so forth pays bills. But I love, love, love Arduino stuff. Some of our most popular videos actually on YouTube are still uh, basics on like servos mm. with Arduinos. I'm going to keep saying Arduino just to agitate Dave. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Uh, we made an automatic dog treat machine with a Raspberry Pi with a Python oh, script, yeah. which would automatically take a webcam picture and send it back to mm. the recipient. Um so I have all did these- a vibe, vibe bowl feed, like a feeder, a screw feeder it looks like? It was a screw, yeah, it was a- had a hopper feed and a screw that, that yeah. moved the treats out to a, a, a hobby servo. Cool. Um, so I have all these videos that I wanted to do and it's like, Hey, we're in a position now where Ed's full-time job is to basically come up with really cool stuff and help execute on that. Nice. Nice. So we have a, yep. we just built a drain for our air compressor, which sends me a text message. If the drain does not sufficiently remove the liquid from the bottom of the tank, which is really important. Yeah, right. of course. So you're basically yeah. just automating a lot of machine stuff, but also fun stuff too. Exactly. That's great. Excellent. So, uh, I, and some of these are going as you're making into products that you then sell. Is that also true? M mostly not. Um, okay. We, we have some stuff in mind. We have some stuff that we may bring out products. Um, my first, my first business was a product based business and don't get me wrong. It's fun. It's great. But selling actual electronics devices are embedded. You know, I'm not set up to do large scale orders, like, you know, thousands or right. hundreds a day. Yeah. I'm not set up to do customer service. I'm not set up to do technical support. Um, so when you take a stop, step back and think, what do you enjoy Saunders? What do you want to do in life? Um, I like making stuff. I like manufacturing stuff. We're actually pretty good at machining stuff. So we make machined products, and then for me, it's YouTube. I really enjoy putting out videos that share, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? inspire, pay it forward. Um, mm -hmm. We're not at uh, we're not at Dave's level, but we're we're not bad. Uh, yeah, we just broke. I'm I'm not much of a bar though. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, it's. Uh, I think I think somebody told me I'm the twenty one thousandth largest YouTube channel or something. At yeah, yeah that, that's about mine. Yeah, I'm about eighteen thousand right. or something. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> But who, who cares? I like to tell myself that even if all those exactly. statistics were being made up, I still enjoy it. I'm happy. Yeah. Right. Well, no, I, I mean, I, at this I point too, it's like a, time. it's like a, it's like a promotional thing for the other stuff you're doing as well. So right. it, that's just as good. So like, I mean, I, I met you yeah. walking through a hallway because you recognize me <laughs> and exactly. we have common right. interests, and right. I'm actually right. super interested in some projects we had in mind for the hologram with this idea of being able to send cellular data. Like, Look at this. He's selling for awesome. me now, Dave. Too. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Wow. The hologram. Yeah. Pimping. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get a text message when your uh, your thing's full, right? There. Right, no, that's really cool. Hey, we live in a rural area. People want to start warm up their airplanes remotely or their tractor remotely or get a picture from a trail camera remotely. Lots of cool mm. things there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John, uh, we, oh, we should mention your podcast as well. So I, that's oh, another yes. thing. I, 
I did very poor at uh, in preparing for this, but I, I didn't realize you have a podcast. Tell us about that. So there's a Canadian knife maker named John Grimsmo. He and I have similar stories. We're the same age. We bought Tormach machines at the same time, unbeknownst to each other. We didn't know each other. Um, he has become, he has remained hyper focused on making these insanely high quality pocket knives. Yeah. Um, and that oh, is a huge community nice. in the knife thing. I, oh, it's yeah. crazy. Yes. I'm yeah. a knife it's, aficionado. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. Very yep. cool. Um, so just awesome. Our story has been much more uh, kind of bouncing around between products and, and the YouTube and, and other stuff, the training. But we're both very much manufacturing entrepreneurs and we've gotten to know each other pretty well over the past four or five years. And I'll get, long story short, um, I'm not a fan of the kind of the BS in the world about how everyone says everything's doing great and how's your company doing? Oh, we're doing great. It's like, hey, we've had some low points. Entrepreneurship <laughs> yeah. is tough. It's lonely. Yep. Um, I, I love what I do, but that doesn't mean I have times where I uh, wonder if I'm making the right decisions. I have times where I doubt my self-confidence and I want to just, you want to have a relationship with somebody where you can talk honestly. So we talk every Friday morning and we've done this for over a year. Some time ago, a friend convinced us to just turn a microphone on uh, as we do it. So our podcast is really just me and John having an intimate conversation that we happen to share with uh, anybody that wants to listen. Nice. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds familiar. familiar. Yep. <laughs> uh, called the the business of machining oh that's great excellent yeah. are there uh, i i actually i didn't really know either like so i know the um the making it guys uh yep. that's what jimmy and uh, i forget the other guy's name i mean i know jimmy but uh, the other guys i f- forget their names uh, but calvin adam i don't remember, I don't remember. <laughs> uh that's a good podcast um and that's kind of in the similar space are there other machining podcasts people should listen to if they're into the field there's one called Making Chips, I think, which is oh, different. Yes, that is. That's more. I think that is. I think that's actually based in Chicago. I think. Yes, exactly. That's uh, correct. Yeah, because I heard about them during IMTS last or two years ago. Otherwise, uh, I don't. Uh, I feel bad because I'm not withholding information just to promote my own podcast. Right, but right, right. Yeah, I, there's I, no I one else. I'm the only one. Yeah. Only yeah. listen to me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We are the only electronics podcast, right? Yeah, there. of course. Right, yeah. Yeah. right, That's right. right. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I, I'm sure if people will write in if they if they do hear of other ones uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's you know it's tough too. I think I think the machining is in the kind of a a similar area where it's like, you know, you could talk about we could talk about the business stuff. But it's like it's such a visual, hands-on kind of thing that it's it ta- it's makes it difficult to not do it with video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. But I think you know, like like I said, I'm a big fan of your channel. Like the, I learned all the 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 parametric stuff from you. But I think the machining stuff too. It's just seeing that real hands-on. Here's how you actually make stuff. Thing. It's really useful. Are there other YouTube channels people should think about following as well? Ooh, good question. Um, that's always tough because a lot of them are my friends, and I feel bad if I don't. It's like the it's like the Oscars awards. You had to right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's such a great field. <laughs> yeah. The two that I go to when I have free time, um, uh, Ox Tool O X T O O L is a guy named Tom Lipton who's just a genius who uh, works at Lawrence Berkeley Labs running their machine Ooh, shop. But really, but he is mm, he nice. is just brilliant. You always learn something. And then a smaller channel, but a guy named Robin Renzetti who um, is uh, a phenomenal tool maker. I mean, he he builds spindles and builds parts where the tolerances wow. and capabilities are insane. But what's unique is that those are those are both guys who come from a generation where you know they're both. I don't want to guess their age, but they're they're not thirty. I'm, I'm thirty four. They're not my age. They're older, and that generation tends to not be like our generation, which is my generation is open and sharing and paying it forward in this collaborative environment. Mm. And those guys are rare examples of where they just share the wealth of information. Yeah. Yeah. That is an interesting kind of cultural thing too, huh? I mean, Dave's a little older, but he's he's pretty open. He's pretty open. You can he's say a little. Videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you've sold me, John, on Fusion 360. All right. I think I'm going to go I've, download it, and you might maybe see it. You know, you know what you're really going to do is you're going to get a bunch of tweets, it. angry tweets from Dave about why the hell do they do this? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably. Hey, how about this? If you like it, shoot me an email, and I'll help you with some tutorials. And if you don't like it, email Chris and take it from there. <laughs> okay. All right. That sounds, so that which, sounds which, which video should I watch first, or, or, or should I just download it and bumble around? If you don't mind, go to nyccnc.com. Under yep. Fusion 360, we have a getting started page. That's going to give you, and you don't have to watch all of those videos, but right. we've tried to curate content that can help get you oh. started 
uh, what you can look at what you think you need to watch, but get started on making basic parts, how to set up the software, some recommended settings and preferences, go from there. Is there a hyphen in there or something? Sorry, I'm just trying to oh. open the webpage. N- NYCNC. And no, no, two Cs. New Sorry. York City CNC. Oh, New yeah. York City CNC. Okay. Yeah. Right. NYC so John, CNC. What, right. what about the, the, I mean, the software, maybe it's it's gotten a little more stable, but like when I started trying it, it was changing a whole lot. Is it still changing a bunch? No, it's pretty stable. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I remember I like it. I was watching some of your videos. I was like, where is, he's clicking somewhere. You know, it's like when oh. you watch a video, it's so, it's so like important to be able to just like get that muscle memory and follow along that it's right. like updating videos can be really important. Okay. And tough. Hang on. Hang on. I'm looking at the videos here. I've I've been triggered. I've been triggered. Um, what, like your your fifth video on the list here is Snap. Turn it off. Why you should turn <laughs> Snap the Grid off? No, 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 no. I'm sure that you need to watch Why? the video, Dave. Do you Snap the Grid? Absolutely. I'm a PCB guy. Of course, yeah, I Snap the Grid. I mean, so, PC- you know, it's I'm funny. They the say grid man. They say you never want to meet your heroes. I really came into this podcast liking your YouTube videos and thinking you'd be a good dude. And at this point, I don't think I like you anymore. You know, John, I actually, I'm on Dave's side on this one, too. I got to say, yeah, oh, my God. Course. And because in, we in come PCB from the design, PCB, you, but you, you must. Will miss, if you, if you, you miss must. a wire in a schematic and it looks yeah. like it's connected, but it's not actually connected, that will totally, that'll ruin your year. But snap that's where is I would every, say, so why wouldn't, EKAD, why wouldn't the software everything. just tell me it's not there? That's ridiculous. Well, you oh, can, cause, cause but it's down the track. Yeah, it down yeah. the track. It's just and do as as a professional former professional PCB layout guy. It's yeah. like snappers everything. Yeah, I, I, so it's, it's at least the schematic side. Maybe not. Maybe less on the on the uh, on the layout side, but still. Well, well, I I will save face with this. I'm telling you, it's important, and I'm telling you my okay. opinion. You can choose to ignore it. All but, right, no, um, I, I, I'm just taking the piss, really. <laughs> I, I just like <laughs> it's just like that's the first thing I saw, and I went, wow. Ooh, okay, you know what you no, should do? We should lo- get. We should get John. You should you should just like watch as Dave, uh, you know, fumbles around live. <laughs> Fumble. That's what we really should do. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I I will make a second channel video, downloading it and bumbling around trying oh to make boy. something without yeah, any any tutorial at all. Right. Yep. Yep. That'll that'll really trigger a lot of people. And <laughs> yep. Yep. It'll be great to watch oh, the comments bad. storm. It'll be real it'll be bad. great. Yeah. Yep, yeah. It'll yep. be fantastic. I just sometimes I love kind of like trolling and sort of mm. sitting back and watching the comments, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> sometimes it's fun. It, uh, it's the only way for me to make stay sane sometimes. John, not so. to, to not ruin your uh, your image of Dave any further, uh, where can where can people find you online and, and find out about your stuff? Yeah, so uh, NYC, CNC. I know that's tough with the two Cs, but uh, that is uh, our YouTube channel as well as our website where we've got all this content on we call it manufacturing entrepreneurship. So it's operating CNC machines. It's starting a hardware business. So tips and tricks. I went to college for entrepreneurship. So that's kind of my passion beyond what people know of me as for machining and then Fusion 360. And then the products that we make and sell are saundersmachineworks.com. Uh, cool. Instagram. Cool. We're, we're, we're very, we have, uh, we violate all the branding and marketing things. Cause like on Instagram, we're Saunders Machine Works. On Facebook, we're NYC CNC. Nah. So yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> All right, I'm cool. I'm going to go try it. I'm kind of you've you've inspired now. Dave. So yeah. there you go, uh, John. Thanks for thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on as a guest. I I am flattered and honored, and I'm I can't tell you how glad I I, t- I called my wife uh, after we met in the hallway at Emho. I'm like, this is so cool. Like what they do is awesome. So I fortuitous uh, timing. Oh, can I make one more plug? Oh, sure. Yeah. In case we have fans in Australia. Um, are you guys allowed to put links in the podcast? Yes. Just, yes. Um, we if you don't, we do. Yeah, that's all I do. That's what we yeah. do. Yeah. That's yeah, all yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah. If uh, after, uh, as long as this doesn't trigger Dave, uh, if he's willing, uh, we're doing a Sydney, Australia meetup on Tuesday, March 13th, um, which we'd love to have anybody who'd like to meet up or see more or learn more about Fusion or anything. Please come put to. the link in. Awesome. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! We'll definitely put the link in. Yeah. Who's who's who? Who is we? Uh, Autodesk is hosting the event on my behalf. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry, that's I, right. I they're right. So, so it's an Autodesk event, right? Cr- uh, yeah, they're, they're I basically they're putting the bill, huh? Yeah, that's cool. Right, I didn't. I'm there on holiday. I didn't care to like find an event space or a restaurant and book something. <laughs> right, so I yeah. just said, Autodesk, are you willing to host an event for me and Auto- and to do a meet and greet to meet fans? We actually have a pretty odd oh, number cool. of fans yeah. in Australia. So oh, Australia is Excellent. great for the tech stuff. Yeah, no, I think. Yeah, yeah it's it awesome. is. Yeah, and Dave can tell his meetup group that still hasn't met. <laughs> no, <laughs> since Shut I up. was there Shut in up. April. I'll be yeah. busy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe you'll drag Dave out too. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, thanks, John. Thanks, mate. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Catch you next time. Take care. Cheers.